It's Thursday, March 4, and this is your Borgidis for the evening news update. So glad you could join us. Police are investigating a shooting incident that occurred this afternoon at 2nd Avenue, Thomas Gap, President Kennedy Drive, St. Michael. Barbados today understands gunshots rang out in the district and a house and two cars were reportedly damaged. We'll have more details as they come to hand. The Ministry of Health announced today that it will be administering the second dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine from April 26. Health officials explained that the timing of the booster shot has been shifted to 10 to 12 weeks after the date of the first injection in light of new scientific information which shows that the vaccine's effectiveness is significantly increased if there's a longer period between the first and second dose. The ministry says while it is aware that some persons were given a date to receive the second dose, some dates may change and those details will soon be provided. The ministry assured that new vaccines are expected to arrive in the island this week to further boost the vaccination program and members of the public are encouraged to be vaccinated using the registration and appointment system. The government says the COVID-19 vaccine will continue to be free of cost at point of delivery, but a fund will soon be set up so that persons can contribute to the national vaccination effort. So far, 44,859 people have been vaccinated. Concerns have been raised by the Democratic Labour Party over international media reports that suggest there's a proposal by government to vaccinate visitors to Barbados starting next month. DLP spokesperson on health, Paul Gibson of Pharmacists, said he became aware of the plan via two articles, one in Travel Agent Central dated March 2 and another in Travel Off Path dated March 1, with both articles referring to releases received from the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. He contends this is a troubling development since thousands of Barbadians are still to be vaccinated. We have press briefings sometimes three times a week and not once were we given details about any plan to vaccinate visitors. We have to read about this in overseas magazines. Why is it that this government continues to keep pertinent information away from taxpayers of this country? When the Prime Minister made mention of Barbadians donating to a vaccine fund, why did she not share the news of this plan? In keeping with the objective of achieving herd immunity, the effort to have individuals other than locals, particularly long stay visitors vaccinated is important and ultimately necessary in the fight against COVID-19 virus. However, there are many questions to be answered so that we can be comfortable that there is no further strain on our already stretched systems Director General of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, assures that COVID-19 vaccines through the COVAX facility are on their way to the region. In the Americas, 36 countries, including Barbados, are participating in COVAX. Ten are advanced market commitment countries that will receive COVID-19 vaccines free of cost, while the rest are self-financing. As more doses are produced, we'll see several waves of shipments arriving in the region every month. In the short term, doses will remain limited and we must use them wisely. Prioritizing those most at risk, like our health workers, the elderly, and people living with pre-existing conditions. Through the pandemic, every country in the world has grappled with shortages of some kind or the other of essential medical supplies, medicines, diagnostic tests, personal protective equipment, and even oxygen. We face the same challenge today with vaccines. Manufacturers are working around the clock to produce more doses, and new vaccine candidates are being reviewed and included in the WHO emergency use listing so that more vaccines will hopefully be available soon. In today's COVID-19 update, the island recorded 23 new cases of the viral illness from 720 tests conducted on Wednesday. There were 45 recoveries, bringing the active number of cases to 498. The 23 new positive cases comprised of 7 men and 16 women. Six of them have already been at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. The remaining are Barbadians. Overall, COVID-19 cases stand at 3,186. 2,651 persons have recovered. A total of 44,859 persons have been vaccinated. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news in Jamaica, there's concern that an expected shipment of the COVID-19 vaccines from India, which were set to arrive in the island today, has now been delayed until next week. But Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton assures there's no need for alarm. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton had announced that the vaccines would arrive on Thursday, but that date has been pushed back to Monday. Opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Maurice Guy, is calling on the government to give reasons for the holdup. The reality is that um, this setback, and we are here in Monday, we do not know whether Monday will be Monday of next week or another date will, 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 will be changed. You know, so um, that is why I'm saying that it will create some amount of, of discord among those who are to, to, to get it. Secondly, despite the delay, Dr. Tufton is optimistic that the new timeline to get the vaccines will not be missed. Their arrival of vaccines came in before the WHO's approval. So they may have accepted at the same time and chose to bring it in before. We, through friendly discussions, accepted after approval. And, you know, I'm sure India's generosity extends to many countries around the world. And it is a gift, as you have said and they are scheduling issues. And, you know, I don't think a couple of days will make a big difference, to be totally frank. And it will be put to good use when it comes because it gives us time to prepare also. He also provided an update on the vaccines which are due under the COVAX facility. So the 14,400 vaccines are in place to be shipped. The only issue around the possibility of delay would be the logistics, the movement of the shipment. On the international front, a tsunami warning has been issued for New Zealand's North Island after three large earthquakes struck off the coast this morning. A 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck at 2.27 a.m. at a depth of 10 kilometers under the ocean. Another 7.4 magnitude quake hit at 6.40 a.m. local time and a third, the largest, at 8.1 magnitude struck at 8.28 a.m. It's been a big morning here in New Zealand, a scary morning for many people across the country. First one can, uh, at about 2.30 this morning with some earthquake and tsunami warnings off the east coast of the North Island. A lot of people evacuated overnight and then this morning uh, we had uh, earthquakes off the Kermadex uh, north of New Zealand, uh, which basically sent a lot of the North Island scrambling this morning. People from the far north all the way down the east coast were told to evacuate to get to high ground immediately. Now, those warnings started coming out at about 9 o'clock this morning, New Zealand time. Uh, and throughout the day, they have continued. There's been a series of earthquakes off the Kuma decks. But just in the last 20 minutes or so, that warning has now been downgraded uh, to, to being uh, high waves, high winds going on. Uh, people are being told to stay away from the beach, stay away from coastal areas. But they are okay to return to their homes at this stage. So no danger to life, but people still told not to go swimming uh, and and the number, you've seen thousands of people around the country have had to evacuate as a result of that. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.